hello viewers welcome to yet another tutorial in this tutorial we're going to discuss part of the computer by the end of this lesson you will be able to identify part of the computer mention some important components of the system unit First of all, let's discuss what is a computer. We will say that a computer is an electronic device that accepts data, processes it, and gives out information and stores the information for future use. Example are the desktop computer, laptop computers, phones, etc. Parts of computer. So this is a computer or desktop computer. We have the system unit, we have the monitor, we have the keyboard and the mouse these are the basic parts of the computer any other parts that you can see here is the peripheral and you just make the computer do more functions they are not very very necessary example is the speaker that you're seeing here good so because the system unit now the system units are having inbuilt speakers good so we will say that a computer has the four parts the, which are the basic we have the keyboard the mouse the monitor and the system unit Good. parts of computer and let's take the computer has many parts like the monitor speaker keyboard system unit printer scanner mouse etc but the four main parts are monitor system unit keyboard and a mouse now let's talk about them one after the other what is a monitor a monitor is a television like part of the computer which displays videos pictures and test it is also called visual display unit there are two types of computer monitor these liquid crystal display as the LCD and we have the cathode ray tube which is the CRT the LCD is a flat screen that you have in your office and the CRT is the old type of the monitor which is let's say a cake or outdated is no more in the system now we have the LCD which is very common and you can see one or you might have been using one as you are learning this tutorial We have keyboard computer keyboard is one of the primary input devices used with a computer keyboard is the part of the computer that has keys for typing example of these keys are we have the examples of the keyboard as the QWERTY keyboard, we have the Azati keyboard, we have the Dvorak keyboard, and Azati. So these are just a few mention types or examples of the keyboard. The examples are based on the arrangement of keys. 
which are the top row keys. The way the top row keys are arranged, that tells us the type of keyboard you are using. So you see the first one, which is the QWERTY keyboard, or the standard keyboard, is the US standard keyboard, which is very, very common with most computers, among most computers. Very common is the US standard keyboard. US standard keyboard. That's the QWERTY. Right. Now, the examples are based on the arrangement of keys. The most popular one is the QWERTY keyboard. Mostly, we call it the standard keyboard. And it has 101 keys, but there are other with 84, 104, 107 keys respectively. This is the keyboard we're talking about, the standard keyboard. Now, let's talk about the mouse. What is a mouse? A computer mouse is a handheld part of the computer that is used to control the cursor or pointer on the desktop. Basically, it has a right button, a left button, and a scroll button. Good. So we have the right button, which is here. We have the left button, and we have the scroll. This is the mouse body, and this is the cord. Leave you a thought and basic one, basic two, basic three. So you should know the part of the mouse. <laughs> we have two main types of the computer mouse. There are the mechanical mouse, which is like this with a ball under. You know when you turn this mouse, there will be a ball turning under it. That's the mechanical type of mouse. And we have the optical mouse. Good. The optical mouse is like this, with the lens under it. An optical mouse can be wireless. That's, that means without wire or without cord. Or wired with cord or with wire. But what we're trying to say over here is that some people argue that we have three types of mouse. Which is mechanical mouse, optical mouse, and wireless mouse. But the wireless mouse can also be optical mouse. As you are seeing this mouse here, it has no wire. That is why we call it wireless mouse. It has a battery. So it uses Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and connect it to your laptop you can use it so it's wireless now you can see that it has a lens under it and this lens is acting as a mouse uses the lens to function they don't use a mouse uses the lens to function they don't use the ball they don't use the ball rolling under it mechanism they use light so this light sees the direction of the mouse and moves the cursor on the screen accordingly that is why we call it the optical mouse and it still don't have the wire so it's still wireless mouse computer mouse that's the mechanics of computer mouse that's the mechanical mouse and the optical mouse hope you are clear if you're not clear leave your comments over here now system unit system unit is a square or rectangular container that contains other internal parts of the computer. There are two types of system units. We have the tower system unit and the desktop system unit. So the tower system unit looks like this and the desktop system unit looks like this. It is the main part of the desktop computer. It includes the motherboard, the CPU, the RAM, and other components. The system unit also includes the case that houses the internal components of the computer. 
Let's talk about some of the internal components of the system unit. We have RAM, which is the random access memory. We have hard disk. We have the compact disk room. Or the random. Uh, we have the read-only memory. And we have the motherboard. We have the central processing unit. We have the fan. We have the power supply. Good. So if we take the random access memory, this is how it looks like. Good. So the random access memory is a form of computer memory that can be read and change in any order. Typically, used to store working data and machine code. It is used to store machine code. So whatever I'm doing on this computer right now are all stored on the random access memory. I was presenting this to it currently. I was presenting to you. They are being stored on the random access memory, which is a memory in this computer. Okay? Good. So this is where your CPU picks data from. CPU picks data from the random access memory and execute. Right? Now let's go to the hard disk. The hard disk is a magnetic storage medium for a microcomputer. Hard disks are flat circular plates made of aluminium or glass and coated with a magnetic material. So this is what you are talking about. So everything on the computer is stored on the hard disk. This is where our data is kept. Remove it from find out or you've removed it from your computer by chance. You have to hold it with care in case it falls down you will lose the data on it it should not fall down if it falls it will damage it that's the hardest where the computer runs now the motherboard the motherboard is a printed circuit board and foundation of the computer it is the printed circuit board and the foundation of the computer that is the biggest board in the computer cases. It allocates power and it allocates power and also communicates to the to and between the CPU, RAM, and all other computer hardware components. So that's what the motherboard does. It communicates between the CPU and the RAM. It takes data through and fro in order to make the computer work efficiently. All other components are stored and are connected to the motherboard. This is how the motherboard looks like. You might have seen it before or not. If today is your first time, you can go to your ICT lab and have a look at it physically. This is how the motherboard looks like. We have the central processing unit as a CPU. Alternatively, To call the CPU as the brain of the computer, that's the microprocessor. Okay, the CPU often referred to as the brain of the computer, as I said. However, it is more appropriate to refer to software as the brain, and more appropriate to refer to the software. Excuse me. Okay, the brain and the CPU as the as a very efficient calculator. So what it does is that 
it calculates whatever you put it into the computer it's like mass when you put in one plus one it will give you two it will never give you three it does not make mistake this is the reason why we say computers don't make mistake so this is what is processing the data it's called the cpu this is how it looks like okay that's the calculation in the computer so it is a brain it's a computer is very wise all because of the cpu now we have the fan like this so the computer fan as the name implies fan it's just to cool down the cpu we've explained earlier that if the cpu is working it turns hot so we need a fan to cool it down in order to continue processing our data you know just like when you are processing the data you become very tired right yeah so uh, it becomes very tired and creates a lot of heat you could see that your laptop generates heat sometimes or your computer or because of the processing of data so we need some fan to cool it down now we have the power supply the power supply unit or the p su it converts main ac to low voltage regulated dc power for the intended component of the computer so this is the power supply unit you connect power over here to the socket and the, the electricity enters and this one regulates the electricity power so when the power comes in that high voltage we don't need that to make the computer work we just 12 voltage 24 and cool so that the computer will not be shocking because you see if you put your hand in the computer it does not all that shock you though there is power to shock you a little bit but because of the power supply it regulates and limits the amount of electricity that should pass through to the motherboard so it's very very important without the power supply your system could blow if the power is fluctuation or if the electricity power is higher than the system so you need the power supply unit in the system unit good thank you for watching if you have any question feel free and leave a question back in this exercise what is the computer which part of the system you need? Sorry, thank you. Which part of the system you need is often referred to as the brain of the computer. Identify the following devices. What is this? What is this? What is that? What is this? Identify them. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.